There's also a uh, geo board here that I never got. That's weird. Mercio was attacked by the Lord of Calamity, and the town was lost. They say a bizarrely dressed witch chased down the townspeople and devoured any she caught. That must be the Lord of Calamity. She dressed as a cackling witch to toy and torment us humans. That monster. They say she wore a black cloak, a big hat, and rode a broomstick. She jeered and jested at those she caught. So, a demon impersonated a witch and hunted humans, huh? What happened in Mercio really got twisted in the telling. That's the grapevine for ya. But that aside, this is unforgivable! I'd never use a broom or wear a black cloak. It'd go against my superb fashion sense. Yeah, superb. We'll go with that. Oh great, it's a cat. Here we go. Oh, woe and misfortune, meow. The harbinger of the end has come to Norman Island, meow. The harbinger of the end? What are you talking about? The harbinger of the end is said to deliver judgment upon the world, meow. If he judges us bad, he will destroy us all. If he judges us good, he'll grant a single wish, meow. That's rather binary. Sounds like a man of extremes. Not just extreme, but all-powerful, Meow. Whatever you do, you'd better stay away from Norman Island. Ah, uh, okay, just stop. Stop telling us not to do things. I will gladly stay away from Norman Island. Honestly, I hope the Harbinger of the End just judges them all unworthy and literally slaughters them to no end. That sounds like the best possible outcome in my eyes. I've got a message from the boss. An antique collector named Wan Jin has died and his sizable stash is being sold off. What do I care about some old pots and paintings? I doubt you do. This message isn't for you. It's for Aizen. For me? Why? This Wan Jin person was apparently quite the dragon researcher, amassing old books and materials on them. The boss just figured some of those books might come in handy to you. I see. There's a shop out in Port Cadnix that's unloading them as we speak. You might want to get a move on before they're gone. Port Cadnix. I'll keep that in mind. Give Tabitha my regards. Alright, so we have another side quest to do. They are just piling up. Wait, who am I talking over here? Oh, hello. That place really was a prison island. Worse, I heard that's where the Lord of Calamity was born. Where did you hear that? From an exorcist who lost his Malak and caught the demon blight. He screamed it as he was killing his exorcist buddies. It happened in the forest. I managed to hide. I've never been so terrified in my life. An exorcist turned into a demon. He must have lost himself when he lost his Moloch. Looks like we really did a number on the Abbey. If that's true, then it means the Calamity was born right under the Abbey's nose, and they let her escape. How could they let that happen? I don't know, but I guess it means the exorcists aren't perfect. I thought that if we followed the Shepherd, the Abbey would save us. But maybe that was just wishful thinking. Yeah, maybe. Okay, let's go to Hellebees. Because I think that's where Jude and Mila are at, and I definitely want to do more of that. And then we'll look at uh, going to Port Cadnix, I guess. Where is the... I have never walked into the inn in this town. Are you kidding me? I knew that it would be in here, or at least something would be in here. What is this? It's a book titled Words and Deeds of the Hero King. The king declared... My people, you must always live with great vigor and hold hope for the world and for our future. Man can turn reason into disorder, but also can we surpass it. Our true power is in transcending the possible to achieve the ideal. My people, you must live without hesitation. Hold hope in your hearts. Hold hope for tomorrow. Transcending the possible. To achieve the ideal. Lord Artorius, I have successfully translated all of the documents left by your predecessor. However, I have concluded that, for the time being, it is impossible to form pacts with all four Empyreans. As I feared, not even my predecessor could achieve more than two. I suppose using the fifth Empyrean is my only option. Is that even acceptable? Doing so would require... I will do whatever needs to be done. 
I betrayed my teacher. I betrayed the mission he gave his life for, that he entrusted in my hands. For a time, I thought I could bear the weight of my sins and go on living with Selica by my side. But now, she's gone. Yes. Man can turn reason into disorder, but also can we surpass it? Our true power is in transcending the possible to achieve the ideal. I must bring about the ideal world. I couldn't protect the people I loved. But this, at least, I will accomplish. Arthur? Huh? What is it, Velvet? Were you just talking to someone? No. I was just thinking out loud. Oh, okay. I, uh, finished making dinner. Tonight is prickle boar stew. Plenty of meat, but not too heavy. <laughs> Sounds great. Let's hurry on back home, then. <sighs> I don't know exactly what all that means, but it kind of sounds nice. I suppose. Actually, it doesn't make much sense to me, either. It's too dense for me. That was a nice little flashback. Wasn't expecting that. Our expedition is back. Where the heck is Mila and Jude? And I guess the gold pangyon as well. It's got to be in a room or something because it's not on the main map. Okay. More exclamation marks to deal with, but none of them look like Mila or Jude. Well, I guess it could be someone telling me about Mila and Jude, actually. Okay, expedition. Almost to level 22. Still have not found the special or the new area. Dang it. I will get it. One day. All right, let's talk to these people. Old man first. Hi. I was wondering if you'd let us put on a little There's another one of these? Show. What do you say? Sounds good to me. Just try and keep it low key. I don't want to attract the Abbey's attention. Ha, that's a tall order. Wherever we go, the boy and I have him rolling in the aisles. The boy? Wait, you mean me? I sure do. I'll play the straight man, you play the funny one. Don't sweat it. Even if you mess up, you'll be adorable. The audience will just lap it up. Did you memorize the script I wrote you? Yeah, I think so. Great, I knew you could do it. But if you merely follow the script and adhere to its every word, you won't be very funny. You need to ad-lib in your own style. For you, that's buttering up the audience and winning them over. Ad-lib? I'm not sure I can do that. I have faith in you, kiddo. You're gonna discover a part of you that you never knew existed. Just focus on finding ways to charm our audience. Okay, I'll see what I can do. Oh, right! Then let's get this show rolling! Hi there! We're a boy and his witch! Your partners in comedy today! Magic Kazam! We're still new to the comedy business, but we'll do our best to give you a memorable show! I'm Fee, the cute one, and this blustering witch is... Muggy-Loo! Wait, who are you calling blustering? <laughs> Meow! S sorry I just suddenly felt like doing an imitation. An imitation? Like, of a cat? Not just any cat, a nearby cat. Meow! You're losing them. Time to go on our charm offensive. Roll with it, kiddo. Every slip up is just a new opportunity in disguise. Uh, see? It's supposed to be a pun on how cats sound and how near is pronounced. I didn't actually hear a nearby cat meow like that or anything. He's explaining the joke? Are you going crazy, Luffy Set? What good does explaining a bad joke do? But you told me to ad-lib to try and win our audience over, didn't you? I figured maybe if I explained it to them, they'd get the joke and find it funny. Just stop. Even if they get the joke that way, it's just going to be sad. I don't mind that. I'm not afraid of messing things up. I just want to make sure our audience feels valued. No, no, you have the right idea, but... I guess I should mention... Moggy Lou's the one who came up with the script. She just made me come and act it out. <laughs> I don't care if it made the audience happy, you just sold me out! I can't work with you like this! No way! 
<laughs> I'd say we got a lot of ad-libbing into our routine today. How was the show? <laughs> I'll just say one thing. You need a better writer. It wasn't me. Your attention, please. I've tabulated the results, and I've come to the conclusion that... You're all hopelessly unfunny! I'm sorry. I don't really care how it went. But when you put it that way, I get a little pissed off. Anyway, that's why I'll be teaming up with Bienfu to take on Modulu. Works for me! I'm ready when you are, Miss Modulu! Which bit are you gonna do? Your specialty, Cat Emperor? Or the surefire automaton assault? Neither. We need brute force to win, so I'm going with Elysian Thunder. Which means that when things are at their peak, we're gonna hit the audience with lots of thunder, right? Right. Thunder in the form of relentless ad-libbing, as much as we can possibly handle. Okay. I'll scout out some local material we can use for our opening warm-up, too. Great. You do that. You two are really in sync. Couldn't you two just have teamed up from the start? It's almost like the whole thing was an elaborate joke just so she could have this punchline. <sighs> well, now with that settled, let's make our way to Logress and meet up with Modulu. <laughs> oh my goodness, it actually hurt to listen to Laffy Sets one. I heard that the Lord of Calamity appeared in Mercio. Now the whole town's been captured by demons. What is the Abbey doing? Why don't exorcists come around here anymore? The Abbey has abandoned us. If the Calamity shows up here, we are doomed. We either run, or give up and drown ourselves in drink. <sighs> if only Lady Teresa were still here. Why has it come to this? Curse you, Lord of Calamity, for everything you've done! You're quite the popular girl. Why not wave to your fans? Yeah, that's a good idea. Curse you, Lord of Calamity! I also like to yell that out while I'm in a bar. Uh, I was told how to beat this, by the way. Apparently, you either turn the game down to the lowest difficulty so it loses its resistances because it resists literally everything in the game, or you have to equip, or not equip, but you have to eat food that reflects damage back to the enemy. So, I'm not sure what we're going to do about that. I'll probably do that. I don't want to set the game difficulty down to its lowest level, but I also hate enemies like this. I don't know. We'll probably find a way to cook a dish that can reflect damage back and do it that way. Is there still a thing in Helavis? No, there isn't. So this isn't where you figure out where Jude and Mila are at next. I'm pretty sure that that's not them either. That's the uh, portal thing. I've been told that the post-game dungeon is linked to the Mount Killerus quest, so we're holding off on that one for now. Uh, there is a quest... On Norman Island, Joy. There's one right there on... Is that South Gand? No, that's West Gand, isn't it? That's South Gand. There's one there. There's also one right... I don't know what that city is right there. Logris. Oh, that's the Majulu one. Okay. Uh, Gallus Lake Road. There's something there. I don't know what, though. That's Port Cadnix, I think. That one right there. Isn't it? Wait a minute, let me find it. Port Cadnix, Port Cadnix. Yes, it is. Okay, so that's the one for uh, him. So I think that that means the only one available at the moment that it could be is Gallus Lake Road, which is close to Stonebury, kind of? Sure, let's fast travel to Stonebury and make our way over there. And hopefully it's Mila and Jude. We also still have to go fight the dragon, I just remembered that. And by dragon, I mean, uh, Zavid's love of his life. Who was not in Tales of Zestiria, not even mentioned in Tales of Zestiria. So I can only imagine that she dies, and then Zavid gets over it after a thousand years and becomes a, a bit of a womanizer. Because I also remember him constantly hitting on all of the females in the party. Alright then. Sadly, we're going to have to take her down. But uh, we're not going to deal with Dragon Lady today. Do I kill you by running into you? Yes, I do. Good. There is a cat chest over here I have not opened, and I should have enough souls for it, so I'm going to open it real fast while we're here. But we are going to go to whatever this exclamation mark is, and hopefully it's Jude and Mila. I'm actually starting to run low on cat souls again. 
I've opened a lot of cat chests in this playthrough. I've got to be getting at least somewhat close to done, right? Like, surely I've gotten over half of them at the least. I don't know. I don't really care if we finish all the cat chests or not in this playthrough. It's not that big of a deal. What really matters is figuring out where Jude and Mila are. Do I need to go up here? Yeah, Gallus Lake Road is up. Yeah. Then up we shall go. It's way over there in the distance, but you... Oh, no, wait. Yeah, lower the thing. No, it's still not there. That's weird. What is this? I do have the Geo board here, at least. Thank goodness. I can probably kill all the enemies I run into. It was, like, up here? I don't know what this is... How do I get there? Maybe I just have to go through there. Okay, well, all right. That's weird. It shouldn't show up on the map here unless... I'm confused by the way this map is laid out with this exclamation mark. Let's just go this way and hope for the best. We're just gonna go this way and hope for the best. Oh, that actually worked out perfectly. Good. Does this even have anything to do with Jude and Mila? Time will tell. I've apparently never been here before. So it might not. I don't know. I don't see Jude or Mila. It, like, wants me to... Oh, it's another Omega Elixir thing. There's a cloud sheep egg. Another ingredient for the Omega Elixir. All right. Let's hurry and get this back to Videl. I'm not sure I've ever seen Luffy said so animated. He's just not one to give up easily. I honestly couldn't tell you where he gets it from. Really? Well, I think you and Luffy said are actually rather similar. You can't be serious. Oh, I'm completely serious. And to a dumb old demon like me, it doesn't seem like a bad thing. All right, good talk, good talk. So that's why the map looked the way it did. I have never walked over to this area before, surprisingly. I like the rock uh, formations here, though. It's pretty cool looking. Do I really care about whatever chest is around this area? Which is probably... Yeah, it's right around that corner. Let's just grab it before I even try and debate with myself on if it's worth it or not. It's a bronze one. It could just be a bunch of gold. No, it wasn't, but whatever. Apparently, I got an odorless fluid out of a chest. That's really weird. Whatever. Okay, so I have no idea where to go for Jude and Mila. I know there's another section to the Jude and Mila cameo side quest because I was told you get to fight them both at the same time. Because I know that that is a... Uh, that's the capital, Lothagrin. I think that's what it's called. No, Lothagrin is right here. Lothagrin is the Tower of Exorcists. Yeah. Logris. Logris. Logris and Lothagrin sound a lot alike in my defense. What is that city right there? Renid. Oh, that's for Videl again. Port Cadnix is for him. Norman Island is for the other thing. They might actually be coinciding. They, Jude and Mila might be at Port Cadnix. And it's just uh, listing two quests there. I know. Okay, let's go to Renid. Renid it is. We'll talk to Videl again. And then, I don't know what we're going to do from there. Maybe we'll just go do the Port Cadnix one and see if they are coinciding. I don't know. Hello. You're Lafayette, right? Yes. Who are you? I'm Videl's mom. He wanted me to give you this note. It's the fourth ingredient. What happened to Videl? He has a high fever and can't move right now. It's the terminal stage of the 12-year sickness. It can't be. All the other kids in town avoid Videl because they're scared of the disease. But you chose to be his friend. I want to thank you for that. Videl always perks up when he talks about you. Miss Videl's mom, I know this is sudden, but can I borrow his book? If we can figure out the last ingredient, 
We can make medicine that'll cure him. I don't care what it takes. I'll decipher it myself and... That sounds like it could be really dangerous. I can't let Videl's friends put themselves at risk like that. What? Besides, I've already lent the book to someone else. Uh... I've been prepared for this day ever since I learned he had the 12 year sickness. I'm sorry, Videl. I'm sorry I couldn't give you a healthy life. <laughs> What's the plan, Lafayette? Do you still intend to look for that last ingredient? Why bother? Time's short and we're out of leads. I know it's sad, but there's nothing we can do. Videl was fated for this end from the start. Is there really nothing we can do? Don't feel guilty. None of this is your fault. You've been a good friend to him. Besides, the Omega Elixir is a fool's errand anyway. How could you say that? Jeez, Velvet! Even I'd have tried to soften that one. What's there to be gained from being less direct? Sure, it might hurt now. But in time, it will be just another memory. A sad memory you'll keep tucked away for when you need it. How can you talk like that? Fidel's still alive! And what about all of his research? The Omega Elixir is real! I'm sure of it! I'm... I'm not ready to give up! Then stop talking about it and keep on looking. You... you mean it? Once you've lost him, it'll be too late. No matter how sorry you feel, no matter how deeply you regret, regrets don't change into memories. They hang over you like a living nightmare. But you haven't lost your friend yet, or your hope. Yeah. Then hold on to it as tightly as you can. Okay. I'm going to find that fourth ingredient. Let's take another look at the clues in Videl's notes. So many things I want to go over just happened. First of all, during that skit, Magi Lu's text was completely wrong. She's like, we've run out of leave, but then her text said, we need to leave or something like that. It was completely wrong. Second of all, what do you mean that sounds really dangerous? Deciphering a book and trying to make a potion of some sort? How is that, like, incredibly dangerous? Like, that doesn't seem very dangerous at all to me, actually. It seems pretty safe. Ah, uh, whatever. Let's look at the expedition and whatnot. <laughs>